good afternoon. Uh, and I guess for some, good afternoon if you're on the East Coast. Um, thank you for signing up for this uh, podcast. I'd like to put a special thank you out to Equa Marketing for sponsoring uh, today's water cooler. Uh, let me just ask you this question. Is I've, I've done a lot of podcasts and webinars myself over the years. Um, have you ever signed up for one and you're really excited because the promotional material has promised you the sun, moon, and stars, the holy grail of whatever it is you're wanting to learn, and you go on and you spend time and you look at your clock and it's 20 minutes in and the presenter is still talking about themselves. And then by the end of it, you realize the entire thing has been a sales pitch, purely and simply. I promise you, this is not going to be one of those podcasts. In fact, what I'm going to be sharing with you are some exact strategies I share with my clients, helping them grow their firms. Uh, it's exactly like a coaching session. So I highly encourage you to use the hand, raise your hand and ask questions throughout the presentation. You don't have to wait uh, till the end. Um, so feel free as we go along anytime question comes up. And I, again, I urge you to take advantage of this uh, live session. Um, you, you put you put into it, you get out of it. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Um, so let's uh, let's just uh, take a poll for my knowledge. Uh, for how many of you are currently the managing partner or owner of a law firm right now? Are you currently in solo practice contemplating or have maybe even started on the path to growing your own firm? Anyone of you that are lawyers looking to grow your practice will find this presentation of value. So 20 seconds about me and that's it. You won't be 20 minutes in still hearing about what I do. I'm Gary Mitchell. I'm a strategic business coach. I've been working with lawyers since 2005. I'm going to spend the time with you I have today on giving you some strategies. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to my website. So let's dive right in. What is business development? Well, I always like to start with what it is not. It's not pushing or pulling. It's not sales in the stereotypical sense of the word. It's not trying to convince people they need something that they don't. Business development for law firms and lawyers is all about one thing, relationships, building them, cultivating them, nurturing them, and leveraging them. So how do you do that? Over the years, working with lawyers, I've developed a proprietary methodology called TST. I didn't go into coaching lightly or easily or take the, the clear path. No, I went right to one of the, perhaps the toughest audiences uh, out there, that being lawyers. You're trained to be skeptical. You're, you have limited time. Your time is your most valuable commodity. So I learned pretty quickly. I had to come up with some pinpoint approaches and strategies that would fit all that criteria and help lawyers succeed. It's called TST and it stands for targeted, strategic, and tactical. So how does it work? Here's an overview. Before you go out trying to drum up business, get more clients and going off in all directions or standing at the mountain top on top of the mountain top or the tallest building in the city, shouting to anyone who listen, make sure you're in front of the people that either have the potential to hire you or refer clients to you your targeted approach. That's step one. You don't have time to waste. Um, and in, in, in many instances, it's really about getting the audience right from the beginning. Learn more about your target audience. Two approaches here, one of which may seem obvious, but I will point it out. Google. <laughs> I, if there's a question about anything, I just Google it. Um, and the second, which may uh, have escaped you is, if you are into your career now and you have clients and you can establish who are your best clients, you ask them everything you, and they will tell you everything you need to know about where to find more of them. It can be that simple. And when you do that, you wanna be very specific. Who, who are your target market? Where are they? Again, look at your ideal client profile, your best AAA clients right now. In most cases, their criteria would be something like, you enjoy working with them, they give you repeated good work, they pay you on time, they don't nickel and dime you, 
They're happy to refer you. And generally speaking, they're a pleasure to work with. That's your triple A client profile. And my advice is if you're going to be spending time on growing your practice or firm, going after more clients, you might as well focus on getting more AAA clients. Takes about the same amount of energy. Learn as much as you can about them. Their challenges, their opportunities, what keeps them up at night, uh, how they work with other law firms. There's no end to the amount of information that they have available for you to help you get more of them. Find out where. Where are they? What associations do they belong to for their own professional development? Where do they go to network? What events do they attend? What do they read? If writing ends up being, and I'll cover a long list of tactics, if writing ends up being one of the tactics you follow, you wanna be writing for publications that target your target audience, your target market, and find out how else you can reach them. Again, this is about uh, going to your current clients and asking them all these questions. And you don't have to do it as a separate call out of the blue. You can simply do it in the normal course of serving them. That's targeted and overview. And the second point is strategic. Again, this is really all about maximizing your time and really realizing the best possible results or ROI, as it's termed, return on your investment. That starts with having a plan. When I say plan, for those of you more uh, senior in your career or leaders of firms, you might have been through one of those exhaustive, exhaustive and very painful processes. Long, drawn out, strategic planning, consultant, big bill, the final document ends up in the managing partner's desk where it never sees the light of day. No, I'm not talking about that. But if you do get a chance to go to the website, you will look at the library of articles dating back to 2006. Uh, and I, <laughs> I'm like a broken record when it comes to having a plan for everything. So again, you know your target, and now you come up with a plan. It doesn't have to be complicated. In your plan, start with the end game, your vision. What's the ultimate firm practice career that you wanna create for yourself, okay? On a coaching call just a month ago, 14 years in, coaching call a month ago, and my client pointed out to me what I was doing was reverse engineering. And I kind of had a chuckle. I thought, oh, yeah, that's what it is. I've just always been doing it from the very beginning. If you want to know where you, how to get somewhere, the first step is, is understanding where you want to get to. Then you, put, you set, set up goals and deadlines, starting with the longer term, backing it out midterm and short term. An important note here is make notes on your progress. One entrepreneur to another, those of you on the call, progress can't happen quick enough for me. I know, it's part of the DNA of being an entrepreneur. It's just, it's who we are. So one of the things I suggest is as you go through the implementation of the plan, the creation of the plan, make notes on the progress. It's positive, positive reinforcement for you that you are making progress and you're moving forward. And the third part of it is tactical. So this is all about the actual steps you will take to execute on your strategy in front of the right people, okay? Information without execution or implementation is pretty worthless. So these are the exact steps you will take to carry out the plan and reach your goals. And in this instance, a lot of the time, it may not be so much about the what. You could already be doing the what, and in the next slide, I'm gonna list a number of those tactics, but then sometimes it's about the how of the what. In other words, how you're doing that certain action or tactic that can make all the difference. So depending on your skills, abilities, what you like to do, uh, what you're good at, these various tactical steps could include the following. Uh, speaking, hosting, um, networking, social media, community involvement, writing, blogging. It is important to focus on what you like and what you're good at. I had one consultation, I'll never forget it. It was interesting because it was an associate, four-year call associate, and was doing you know, the 
marketing audit of what he's done before, what he likes to do, uh, what he would like to do more of. And he said, quite frankly to me, he said, I hate writing. If I have to write to grow my career, I quit. <laughs> I've never heard it put that uh, profusely before. I assured him I was never going to uh, suggest he write or push him in that direction. You may already be doing some of these, um, but with a few little tweaks, you could be enjoying much better results for your ROI. Now I'd like to take you through one of these tactics using the TST methodology. Targeted, strategic, and tactical. Now, again, uh, if you're like most lawyers, uh, in, fact, in fact, most people, one of the things on that previous list that you have varying, varying degrees of dislike or discomfort with is networking. And again, I say it's not just lawyers, it's people in general. Well, the good news is through the design of this TST methodology and working with people just like you, um, I have come up with strategies and approaches that not only take the pain out of networking, uh, they actually make it effective, and I've even been told fun. So, in the past, your, your typical networking event might have looked something like, you see an event advertised, you think, I should go to that, I really should go to that. Uh, you're not looking forward to it from your past experience. You show up, you walk into the room, and there's a large number of people you've never met before. There could be tables, or it's a standing event. In that case, you're likely standing against the wall. Uh, and it brings back memories of your first school dance. All the girls on one side, all the boys on the other. Not fond memories. Now, I may be exaggerating a little bit to point out the purpose. But here's where I said in the last section, it can be about the how of what you're doing. So let's look at networking going through the TST model. Um, I have one question. What is the tactic you found most successful? Uh, it's actually the, uh, what I'm doing right now. It's, educa it's educational marketing. So whether it be live, face-to-face, -face, or podcast, uh, at a conference, or specific to a client, uh, there's very, various different approaches to use it, but it's by far the number one successful tactic. Because you're not, again, you're not pushing, it's, it goes back to the beginning when I said what business development is about. You're not pushing or, or pulling. You're not self-promoting. You're actually providing value. Like it's, there's two terms I use for it. It's educational marketing, but it's also value add. You're not trying to sell anybody anything. You are, uh, they're not even clients yet, and you're helping to educate them. This can be used not only for client, direct client development, but I also recommend it in some situations, building a referral network with other professionals, right? Um, wills and estates, for instance, I've had clients that will use or use this approach and go and work uh, with realtors. Um, because someone's bought a house, uh, they said it's a, a larger investment, and now they've come to the conclusion that they probably should have a will. Um, so they team up. Uh, or it could be accountants. Um, so it's not just the targeting of clients. It can be a very effective tool for building the referral network. That was a good question. Um, okay, so targeted uh, networking with the TST model. So now, presumably, you know who your target audience is, and you've done some research with your current clients to find out where you can find them, what associations, and what events. That's a good start. Now. You want to go deeper. Identify key targets, actual people, okay, you would like to meet. And once you've signed up for an event, reach out to the organizers to, to see if you can get a list of attendees. It's, it, does, it doesn't always happen, but it doesn't always not happen. Sometimes you will get a list of attendees. And that's where you can plan ahead of time uh, targeting specific people. Another ta uh, tactic is to circulate that list amongst your colleagues and your own network of connections to see if people know people they could make specific introductions to you ahead of the event. You can post an, a note on LinkedIn. So these are all things that you can do under the targeted. And the result is that before you walk, even walk in the door, you've got, you're, you're well into your plan, which is the second part of the process, strategic, you know who you want to meet. And that's being targeted. And right off the bat, you're setting yourself up 
for a much more successful experience with networking. Now, strategic. So you have the plan going in. Um, you know who's going to be there. You know who you want to meet. Uh, you've been re you've been introduced to some people. Now, part of your plan is you reach out to the head of them uh, ahead of time before you go to the event and suggest that you meet at the event, whether it was an introduction or a, a referral or however the introduction came to you, suggest that you meet um, at, a, uh, at a break. So before you even walk in the room, you've got meetings, casual meetings, set up already. You're going to meet Bob at the break, you're going to meet Tara at lunch, and you're going to meet Susan at the second break. Again, posting a message on LinkedIn saying you're going to be at this event, uh, making a note of the types of people you're interested in meeting and reaching out to your network to see if they have suggestions. The point is the more you can do ahead of the event, the more likely you are to meet contacts, quality contacts, and start the process of your business development, which is building relationships, which eventually leads to more clients and more, refer more referrals. So that's the two part, the two first two parts. Now let's look at the tactical side of networking. Again, um, and I don't know where it came from, but the misconception out there about networking is it's about pitching. It's about talking about yourself, uh, peddling your, your wares uh, and selling. No, no, no. I think it's one of the reasons why my clients have had issue with the whole concept of networking because they don't like that. Well, the good news is that's not what you should be doing. <laughs> You're supposed to be meeting people that may have the ability to bring you business or refer business to you. And it starts with conversation. So it's not pushing or pulling or any uncomfortable small talk. It's learning about them. If you want to you remember the outcome, the approach of all of this, the overarching approach is business development, is building relationships. It's kind of hard to build a relationship unless you know something about the person that you want to build a relationship with. That's the point of networking. The outcome that you're looking for is that you've met people face to face, you've established some level of rapport, you've learned something about them, and there's a reason for you to take it to the next level. You can't learn anything about them if you're talking uh, about yourself. So the outcome, obviously, is you want to find people. And then the follow-up step is going to be the most critical part, and that's where most people drop the ball. Um, the outcomes, obviously, the end outcome is you want more clients. You back that up a step, you want more relationships. You back that up a step, you need people to build relationships with. You back that up a step, where we are at this moment, networking, you're having a conversation. Does that all make sense? Raise your hand if it doesn't. You're not following me. Okay, I'm thinking that makes sense. <laughs> okay, um, now here's, the, here's where it all gets interesting. You'll see where, how the reverse engineering comes in. One of the, the worst things that lawyers have, and I keep saying lawyers because I only work with lawyers, so I'm not saying lawyers are any worse than any other professional group. Um, lawyers are really bad at follow-up. And it's been my experience that one of the reasons they're bad at follow-up is they don't know how to do it. And why they don't know how to do it is because they didn't learn anything about the person at the event, and so they think if they send them an email or follow-up, it's pushy and it's Pulley and its sales and gimmicking. Yes, you're right, it is. But if you followed me so far and you're following these strategies and steps, you do have a reason to follow up. So, in that follow up, you referred to the conversation that you had, what you learned about them. And keep in mind, it doesn't have to always be a business uh, thing that you've learned about them. It could be a personal interest, it could be. Um, you know, kid, your kids or sports or, or a hobby. Um, it, it doesn't matter. The point is you learn something about them and that gives you an easy way in to follow up. Next point I want to make, and I, I call it a rule because I have that rule with all my clients, is you do that follow up in 24 hours. 
which brings me to the second point why lawyers are terrible at follow-up, because they procrastinate. Oh, no, did I say it? Lawyers procrastinate? Well, here's how it works. If you don't send the follow-up in 24 hours, then all of a sudden it's two days, three days, a week, and the week's now two weeks, and you figure, what's the point? It's true. There is no point. You've wasted your entire time doing the uh, planning, looking at your target audience, looking at where they are, planning for the event, attending the event, all of it, a waste of time. But flip it around, follow these suggestions, and you are getting to meet people that you can follow up with and take it to the next level. Now, that's just one example of how my methodology can work with one tactic, networking. And I can how, tell you, oh, go ahead. Um, how would you go from that follow-up coffee to asking for their business or bring on a client? Okay, um, that I get asked a lot. And I've heard stories where, like literally, I've heard stories of what not to do, where a partner is coming back from a business trip. It's not a networking event, but it's similar circumstance. Sitting beside someone on a plane, the partner chats up this person the entire flight. <laughs> Again, the whole not what to do, not this is not what you do, um, gets back to the office and has the marketing department send them the brochure. And this is a true story uh, based on someone else's experience. Uh, there's steps, right? And again, it's not pushing or pulling. So you go from the first follow-up meeting, okay? And you're going a little bit deeper. So you've, you've made some connection or rapport at the actual event or on the airplane or at the dog park or on the soccer field when your children are playing a game or practice. Wherever it is, the connection. The follow-up coffee is to go a little deeper. Find out if there's more reason, mutual, uh, most of the time, reason to go a little deeper. From there, and you gauge the interest, um, you, you offer to do a sit down and, and do a brainstorming session. And from there, then you're down to the point where you're doing like discovery work with what their actual needs are. And I just went through this process myself. I was referred to someone, I won't say the physician or the firm or whatever, I was referred by email to someone. I had a lunch with him back in March and I didn't go in trying to sell anything. I just asked questions and listened. Now, most of the time, I know the answers to the questions, but they don't know I know the answers to the questions. Same thing with your clients. You know the answers most of the time. You know, based on how much you've, you've learned about them at this point, what their challenges are, but they don't know. So this is a very soft way for you to demonstrate your expertise in the questions you ask. You go deeper, and by the time you get to that end of the final meeting, they're asking you to serve them. You never have to ask them for the business. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so I bring up my own example because it's not just my clients that follow this. I do as well because I'm a professional service provider as well. So it's, again, it's all about the relationship. And if you try to push a relationship too fast, it's kind of like dating. You don't go from a first date to getting married unless you're really drunk in Vegas. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I just, that was not in the script. <laughs> um, it, but if you think about it as dating, it's very similar. Uh, it's, you know, one step at a time. There's no set, uh, it's, it's because you're dealing with different people all the time. So the, the one follow through from beginning to end could be three weeks. Another one could be six months, right? So I often get asked, well, what's the timeline? There isn't a set formulated timeline. It's all about the relationship and the person. So you've got to know the person. But I swear, this is just one example of how you can use TST, targeted, strategic, and tactical in your business development and grow your practice and grow your firm. And imagine if you took TST, the TST approach, with all of your business development efforts. Whatever you do, and I'm not suggesting you do everything, you still have to, you still have to play lawyer and bring in the, the revenue. But whatever you do, if you follow this TST, based on my experience and the clients I've worked with, you will grow your firm. You will grow your practice. Now, the next thing to do is take it to your team. 
So it's not just you, uh, it's your entire team. And when I say team, I mean, if you're solo practice, you've got a receptionist, uh, you may have an assistant, you might have a clerk or a paralegal. That's your team. And all of them can be doing the same thing. If you follow that it's about relationships and building them, all of the people on your team have relationships and have the ability to build relationships. Um, if it's a firm, it's just a more strategic uh, front line, your lawyers, your paralegals, your legal assistants. Uh, but I've seen it. I've seen it happen. And in smaller firms especially. You know, I got hired a few years ago from a small uh, firm owner in Toronto, family law firm. And I'll, it really changed my... Um, at, up until that point, I was only working with large firms. And this particular owner, very well recognized in Toronto, uh, he's now, this is 2013, I think. So uh, we've had a relationship now for six years, and he's a friend and colleague. Um, but the point is, he hired me to work with his first year associate and law clerk. And that law clerk, in the course of one year, brought in three times the uh, value of the coaching program in new business. Oh, and by the way, she also increased her dockets by 20%. So don't underestimate the rest of the people on your team. This isn't just lawyers, because people make relationships and build them with other people. So take this strategy and uh, get, your, get your team engaged. And imagine what, if it looked, what it would look like for you, no matter how big or small you are, if the majority of the people on your team were out there in various directions in different parts of the community, doing the same thing you are. Imagine what that would look, look like. Remember back to the beginning when I said business development is all about relationships. Oh, I've said this. Well, all your people have them and they can build them. <laughs> and I've seen it. I've seen it in action. Um, it does get overlooked a lot, um, but train them in the same method. Uh, consider providing some more in-depth training and support to those people who on, on your team who actually demonstrate some real natural ability in this area and have a desire to help you grow for, in your firm while growing their practice and their own income, by the way. Because when I'm working with firm management and I'm uh, working on this strategy, I also make sure they take care of the people who are bringing in the new business. But it could be anybody, and you'd be surprised uh, to find how beneficial your people can be as untapped resources. Um, Another part where your team can get engaged, and this is another strategy of business development and marketing that, that widely gets overlooked. I coined this term about 12 years ago, and it's the only thing I'm gonna brag about. Uh, it's known as cross-selling in the legal industry. I hate it, lawyers hate it, and it doesn't make any sense. If this is about service, and it is, the action is actually about cross-serving how to offer more services to your clients, and that's helping them. Cross-selling only appears to uh, benefit the firm. More money coming in the door, more files, more work. But if you think of your people as the front line of your law firm, there's tons of opportunities for them to find out what more your clients need. It's a simple strategy. You encourage them to become the eyes and the ears of the firm. On any given day, your people are in touch with your current clients. The more they listen, the more they understand about the client's situation, the more opportunity is for your firm to serve them in additional ways. And that's, that's serving. I have this story, it's a true story, firm in Calgary. Um, this junior associate was on a routine call with a large firm client. This particular associate was doing some lower level work, but was checking in with the, the client. And it turns out that associate learned of a, of a huge impending need. And as soon as he got off the call with the client, he went directly to the managing partner. And as the managing partner tells me the story, he was in the, the client office 20 minutes later. And another 20 minutes later, he was leaving the client office with a huge retainer check. This is a true story and it, it it illustrates how simple it can be by knowing your clients and constantly being in touch with them, finding out what's going on, making sure you know. The other opportunity here is when you hear 
that they're not happy with another firm providing another service. It's not you're trying, you're not trying to poach work from other firms, but your client is telling you they're not happy. And you can't know that unless you're in touch with them on a regular basis, checking in, making sure they're happy and making sure that you're taking care of all of their needs. Now I want to bring marketing into it. Um, some people get confused about the difference between marketing and, and business development. Again, I like to keep things simple. Marketing is the same as business development, except marketing is on the broader target market level. Business development is about building relationships, but it's a face-to-face, -face, more personal. So that's going out, that's the networking. It could be social media. Um, that's the individual effort of a lawyer or team member. Marketing is the firm effort. So that's the advertising, uh, sponsorships, but your, your point is to do the same thing, build relationships with your target audience. And there's some difference between uh, corporate and retail. Uh, uh, corporate, you know, your business to business, retail, your business to consumer. And I found actually business to consumer, there are a lot more avenues to use, such as Facebook. Um, corporate lawyers are not going to use Facebook for bringing in business, but almost all uh, my retail uh, lawyer clients use Facebook. So there's different strategies, but the approach is the same. Um, traditional advertising, print, radio, and TV, digital advertising, Google ads, Facebook ads, sponsorship, website, and SEO, digital marketing, Facebook and LinkedIn campaigns. There's a lot of things out there, but keep it simple and make sure it's doing the same thing as your business development. And that's building relationships. Now, here's where it really becomes key is when you align all of your marketing tactics with your business development tactics. In, a, in other words, I'll just give you an example. You're speaking regular to, regularly to an association or group or networking function or writing for a publication. Consider placing ads in that same uh, publication or creating a digital marketing campaign targeting people who visit your website. The point is, again, bring it, bring it back to the core of it. If your people or you are out there doing face-to-face, -face, you know, meeting people, shaking hands, kissing babies, uh, then if your firm is engaged in marketing, it should be in those same areas targeting the same overall target market. You'll get bigger bang for your buck. It works both ways. It supports you and the individual work of team members. And when your people are out there face-to-face, -face, they see a face of your firm, of your practice. So the point is, if you're gonna maximize your efforts, you will get the biggest bang for your buck. All of your business development efforts should be seamlessly aligned with your marketing efforts. So the conclusion is very simple today, folks. This is all about relationships. Finding people to build relationships with, building them, nurturing them, leveraging them, in the case of referrals, networks, and then continually finding more. Follow this TST methodology, targeted, strategic, and tactical. It will, it will get you laser-like focus on whatever time and efforts you are putting into business development and growing your firm, and you'll see bigger results. You'll also see bigger results if you engage your entire team in this. And when I say entire team, I mean as many of them as possible. Some people just won't do it, that's fine, but the more, the better. And final point, and this is all related to growing your firm, is serve and look for opportunities to cross-serve, have all your people uh, in touch on a regular basis, being the eyes and ears, the front line of your firm. Questions? Um, what are your thoughts on using Facebook for business development? Well, I, I brought it up briefly, uh, but you know, corporate law, you don't use Facebook. Um, family law, uh, wills and estates, uh, employment law, um, when it's, re I call it retail law for lack of a better term. When it's business to consumer, Facebook can be an excellent tool. 
But again, you want to align it. It's just one tool um, and Facebook ads cost money. So you want to make sure that if you're spending money, then you're also uh, supporting those efforts in your other business development efforts. So yes, Facebook is great. Um, I don't use it uh, personally for, for business because I'm lawyers are not looking for a coach or consulting or how to grow their firm on Facebook. They'd be looking on LinkedIn. Corporate clients are not on Facebook looking for a lawyer, right? They might go to LinkedIn. So there's a differentiation, but that's just one way. The, the specific tactics can be different in retail law and corporate law, but the approach is the same. The fundamentals are the same of what you're trying to do and the outcome you want. Go where your client is. Yep. Go where your client is. Yep. Okay. Well, I'd like to end today by thanking you for taking time with me. i uh, also like to thank Equa Marketing, uh, the leaders in video marketing, for sponsoring this water cooler. Um, this is our first, folks. This is our first live session. We're gonna be hosting these uh, business development, law firm leadership, growth, profitability podcasts on the first Tuesday of each month, um, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 10, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, there'll be more promotion going forward. And again, if you, if you wanna maximize your time invested in these podcasts, please come back with a list of questions. For those of you who didn't get to see this uh, live or participate live, you do have access to watch it and hear it later. And I want to thank you, Lila, personally for your guidance mm -hmm. with the technology going through. Um, and thank uh, Equa Marketing again. Thank you very much. Um, if you want to go deeper, if you like what you heard, uh, would like to go deeper dive into your practice and your firm and what can be done, here's my contact information. And I want to thank you again for your time. Thank you.